Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of yet another very unusual planet and not just the planet but the star itself seems to be really weird as well. And the reason for this weirdness is in the way it orbits around the galaxy. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Man. So first of all, this new discovery comes from the NASA's test telescope that has been pretty much actively looking at the night skies for the past uh, few years now. And since we've already confirmed over 4,000 different exoplanets out there, it's no surprise that more and more exoplanets turn out to be a lot different from what we imagine them to be. At the same time, another really exciting mission is from the so-called ESA or European Space Agency, and this is the so-called Gaia Telescope which is responsible for, well, actually forming one of the most comprehensive 3D maps of the nearby moving objects around the solar system. More specifically, it's already been able to identify close to about 2 billion different stars with extremely precise motion. But when some scientists decided to combine the data from test telescope with the data from the Gaia telescope, they realized that there were quite a few stars out there that do have unusual motion around the galaxy. Well, first of all, let's briefly talk about the galaxy. Now, this right here is what a typical, I guess, animation or a typical simulation would show us the Milky Way to look like. But as I mentioned in previous videos, this is very simplified and more or less actually is incorrect. More specifically today, we're going to be talking about this part, the edge view of the galaxy. Here, if you look at it, it does seem to be relatively flat and relatively thin. And we know for a fact that our galaxy is actually not flat at all, it, it is curved, it's uh, basically a relatively warped and also wobbling galaxy, and I've discussed this in one of the previous videos. But at the same time, this doesn't actually show you what's happening in the regions around the galaxy itself. As you see from this image right here, our galaxy and many other so-called spiral galaxies do have several layers within them. Now, for the most part, most of the visual objects, basically all of the stars, including our sun, are in this really, really thin disk, which is actually what you're seeing here. So the only thing that's simulated right here in Space Engine is actually the thin disk of a typical spiral galaxy. But most of the galactic mass is actually in the so-called galactic halo, which is more or less invisible because for the most part we think it contains a lot of dark matter, but also some stars and global clusters. It also contains a lot of so-called stellar streams, which are normally the leftovers from various galactic collisions. And we've seen these stellar streams not just in the Milky Way, but also around other galaxies as well. Which obviously suggests to scientists that this is kind of how most of the galaxies usually evolve and develop this unusual shape. But then there's also something known as the thick disk. Now we don't really know if all galaxies or if most galaxies have this, we know that ours does, but this thick disk is also a result of a um, relatively old, relatively ancient actually, galactic collision. Now the only thing we know about this galactic collision is that it was relatively large and uh, resulted in a very massive um, thick disk. And it's also something that happens over 10 billion years ago, so this is a really, really ancient event. So most of the stars located in this so-called thick disk are also really old and really ancient. And most of the stars in this region actually orbit around the galaxy in a more peculiar way. Basically, um, they are usually more inclined to the galactic plane, moving above and also below the so-called galactic disk. And in some cases, they even go beyond that. So it's no surprise that at some point we were going to discover at least one star in this so-called thick disk that also contained a planet. And this is just one of these stars we've discovered. And so let's try to simulate what exactly the scientists discovered. So first of all, the star itself is not really that weird. Only the orbit of the star is a little bit strange. This star is known as LHS 1185, and it's a very quiet and also relatively old, probably more than 10 billion years old, M-type star, or in other words, a red dwarf, very similar to the nearby Proxima Centauri. The motion of this star around the galaxy means that it actually goes above and then below the galactic plane by roughly around 6,000 light years. And just to give you something to compare this to, the distance between the center and our sun is about 27,000, so it basically goes all the way to the edge of the thin disk, back and forth, back and forth. 
And we've seen quite a lot of stars doing this, but this star is the first one we've discovered with an actual planet around it. And we honestly didn't think that any of these stars could have such planets. Mostly because a lot of these stars are really ancient, so their metallicity, or basically their composition, is very different from our own solar system. Most of these stars, they only have hydrogen and helium. They don't, don't actually have a lot of silicates, a lot of metals. They don't really have anything to make terrestrial planets out of. But this star has a planet that's very similar in size to planet Earth. This unusual terrestrial planet known as LHS 1815b seems to be really extreme in many different ways. First of all, it orbits really close to the parent star, so the uh, single orbit here takes about 3.8 days, meaning that it's very likely tidally locked. It's also probably um, one of these so-called eyeball planets, with the star-facing side being extremely hot and the opposite side being relatively cold or possibly even extremely cold. But the most unusual part about this particular planet is that it seems to be terrestrial and extremely, extremely dense. So here, let me put Earth for comparison. As you can see, their size is relatively similar. This is only about 8% larger, but it has about 8.7 times more mass, meaning that this is a really, really condensed object. The surface gravity here is probably about 7.4 times higher, meaning that you would basically weigh 7 times more on this planet than you would on Earth. Probably not the best planet to go to if you want to lose some weight. But jokes aside though, this is really a very unusual object. Its density is technically higher than density of metals here on the planet. This can only suggest that this planet is probably made up of some really exotic minerals and metals. Something that might not even exist in the solar system, or at least something that we've never seen before. And because this planet is so close to its parent star, it very likely does not have water or ice or really anything on the surface. And depending on its composition, it could be one of the more exotic planets we've discovered so far. We've actually never seen a planet that's so extremely dense, yet at the same time being so close to its parent star, while also being one of the more ancient planets and stars we've discovered in around our neighborhood. Simply because this is actually not so far away from us, it's only about 97 light years away, which is comparably close compared to other exoplanets we've discovered. And considering that some of the more dense objects in the solar system are usually metallic asteroids, where density can be up to about 8 grams per centimeter cube, and our planet Earth being about 5.5 grams per centimeter cube on average, this here is really strange, because the density here is about 37 grams per centimeter cube. And just to give you another comparison, this right here is known as osmium, and this is the densest metal we know. Its density is about 22 grams per centimeter cube so still dramatically lower than what we've discovered on this planet. In other words, there's quite a lot of mysteries to resolve here. And the biggest mystery is of course the origin of this planet so close to its parent star. One of the possible resolutions to this mystery is that maybe this planet was actually born a little bit differently. Maybe this used to be some kind of a gas planet. In other words, a planet similar to, for example, Jupiter, that actually had a solid core that eventually, with time, got compressed and became extremely dense. But as it came closer and closer to its star, all of the gas evaporated, eventually leaving behind the extremely dense core that's now there, orbiting as a typical terrestrial planet. We actually even have a name for such planets, we usually refer to them as Ctonian planets, basically planets that are the remainders of scorched giants, or other gas-like objects that eventually lost all of their gas due to the proximity to the star. Now obviously there is currently no way for us to test any of this, but there are definitely a lot of questions that need to be answered about this unusual star system. So overall this is definitely one of the more interesting discoveries of the past few months, and will most likely result in some really interesting follow-up papers that might discover something else about the system that we currently don't really know just yet. On that note though, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. It's a very interesting star orbiting in a very peculiar way with an extremely unusual planet that seems to be, at least currently, difficult to explain. An extremely dense planet in a very peculiar system. So once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, but for now that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful wonderful person t-shirt in the link in the description. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.